Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat. I am here today with Amanda Neg. Amanda, the driving force behind Farm Fit Training, hails from the resilient steepled plains of western Nebraska with a foundation in health promotion and radiation therapy. Her journey took a transformative turn on a South Dakota family farm. Oh, I forgot to tell her I used to live in North Dakota and have been to South Dakota many times. It's where my children were born. Uh, she faced personal adversity there, including the loss of her home to fire on the eve of a global pandemic. If it couldn't be any worse, right? Amanda channeled her experiences into creating farm fit training as a certified personal trainer, nutrition coach, and mental health advocate. She embodies the burn your ship mentality, advocating for a holistic approach to wellness that marries physical strength with mental resilience, known as farm fit mama. Amanda leads with compassion, commitment, and integrity, and, and she is inspiring a community to thrive beyond limitations and transform adversity into strength. This was such a great episode today. If you want to be inspired, if you've ever faced a moment where you feel like you've lost everything or you don't know how to get yourself back up again, because something tragic has happened. This is the episode for you. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed Amanda's uh, vibe. You can just tell what a great person she is, passionate and creative and a strong fit for mama. So without further ado, we're going to dive into this episode with Amanda Nig. I'm very excited to have Amanda Nig today on the show. I'm excited to be here. I'm honored. We were just talking and I was like, gosh, I saw your picture of all your muscles. I was like, she is a badass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it did take work. <laughs> Definitely. Yes, work. I know. I know. <laughs> and dieting and, you know, lifting and all the things. Uh, but I love it. And I've been doing it for ever since I was 21 and I'm 61. So I think it pays uh, because when you see the other end of things, like I'm seeing now, because, you know, I'm getting up in years, you start realizing that it does matter what you do, what you put in your mouth, uh, you know, working out, uh, going to bed, all the things like on time. I mean, it, it does matter because at the end of your life, you want to have quality of life and, I mean, going to the nursing home, really, uh, in the hospital, it really makes you realize that your health is number one, number one, because you will work so hard. Uh, you, you know, you would, you would spend millions of dollars to get that back once yes. you lose it. So I'm so glad to have you on today because you're farm fit mama. And you have a backstory and we were chatting you guys before we started about Amanda's backstory, which I find fascinating. And it also shows that no matter what's going on in your life, that sometimes your worst struggle and disaster can be your biggest like jump forward in creation. Um, and so I want you to just give us uh, your backstory. Um, I, well, thank you for that. Yes. I mean, do I want to ever go through that again? Absolutely not. <laughs> but, um, exactly what you said is like, sometimes like we have to face like a, a big shift, a big pivot to realize the direction that we were always meant to be on. Mm -hmm. And that's what it took for me. Um, we were sharing like prior to starting my business, I've always been in the fitness space. Like you know, not necessarily as a trainer, more for I was impacting my health. You know, I've always I've been that student that was in, you know, you name it, sports, soft, fast pitch, softball, soccer, cheerleading. And like we're talking competitive cheerleading, not not just lifting people like flipping people like full on competitions. And so 
for me, I've always known that like nutrition and moving your body and exercise is a key component to long life, just like you said. And so when, um, COVID hit right before COVID, it, that's the direction that kind of really made a pivot into like launching my business. And so the day before the national pandemic, um, our house burnt down. We just built this beautiful forever home that we were going to retire in. It was our dream home. It actually was located oh my gosh. half a mile or half a mile from the farm. So I live in rural America. I live on a fifth generation farm with my husband. Um, and then we're raising the sixth generation. So it's definitely in my husband's side of the family. It's been around since 1910 and a super honored and part of that legacy, that family legacy, because like agriculture is not something that I ever grew up in. It's something that I married into. So it's always been an adventure in that aspect. Um, and so in 2020 or prior to that, we built this home that we were going to retire in. It was beautiful. It sat, it sat on like 10 acres. It was surrounded by all his farmland as well, his family's farm land and uh, burnt to the ground. We lost everything within a matter of two and a half hours. And, you know, in America, you're talking different fire departments. We had five local small town fire departments out at our, our, out at our house that day, trying to stop it and save our home. And they just couldn't stop it. And it was just one of those horrific things where you just watched it burn to the ground. And, um, I share the story a lot on my social media because it, it really shows, you know, like we all went into COVID, you know, especially 2020, um, with that unknown, like what's next, like what's going to happen here. Um, and it really highlighted too, how big physical and mental health is as well. And I remember after we lost our home that next day, like just those unknowns of like, Hey, you can't talk to people face to face anymore. And we're still trying to like figure out like where we're going to live, where I'm going to get like groceries. We didn't even have groceries. You know, we lost everything. And so we just had this amazing community surround us um, and support us during that time. And I'll be hundred percent honest. I share this a lot. Linda is like, my mental health was at its absolute low. Like we're talking low, low, like I wasn't suicidal, but I mean, I didn't want to get out of bed. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to like be a mom. Um, all of a sudden yeah, I, devastating. I, I, yeah. Like I sold insurance prior, mm-hmm. uh, you know, door to door insurance and I loved it. And I couldn't even do my career anymore. Um, I was homeschooling our kids, which is a whole nother gamut in itself. Like I'll be the first to tell you that teachers do not get paid enough. (laughs) Oh, right. Right. (laughs) Like at all. And so it was just like, you know, when we lost our home, I lost my gym and my husband knew that that was my space. Like my, that's the way I was able to check in for myself because after having our kids, I gained 30 pounds. I had two C-sections. One of them was actually an emergency C-section. So my body changed a lot. And there was a lot that I was uncomfortable with in my own skin. And so he knew my gym time was like my golden hour. Like, I, like not, it wasn't an hour of workout, but it was just that golden self-care time. time. That I, yeah. So you feel like day. you. Yeah. And so he would, he was, bless his heart. Like he would go out in our junk pile because every farm has a junk pile. And he would bring me these random pieces of equipment to work out with because you couldn't get weights mm-hmm. in 2020. They were like liquid gold. <laughs> like you just couldn't get weights anywhere. And so he would bring me a bunch of weights, you know, like random pieces of tire or metal that he found in the junk pile to use as weights. And I started sharing that online. So prior to that, my handle was Amanda Nig. And after that, I switched it over to Farm Fit Mama because everybody was asking me questions. They're like, what are you doing? Whose program are you doing? Like, what are you doing for nutrition? And so I was like, well, I'm doing my own. I'm kind of figuring it out as I, as I go. And so I remember in 2020, I shared with you is like, I did this plank challenge and wasn't certified, had no knowledge on how to put a program together, but I put this little simple online plank challenge together in May of 2020 and threw it out there. And across the world, I had like 800 plus farms. I actually don't know uh, people in agriculture participate in this plank challenge. And they were planking on like cows, bison, ditches, fields, tractors, barns. I mean, they were just participating. And it was really cool to see that because it like opened my eyes to where it was like, wait a minute, like it really brought our community together in agriculture as a whole. But at the same sense, it was like nobody's leading the charge when it comes to physical and mental health, especially in the agriculture space. You know, there's so many people out there advocating 
for, you know, consumer producer and bridging that gap is so that the general public can actually understand agriculture better. But nobody was advocating for us, you know, like talking about our own mental health, like agriculture as a whole is leading the charge in suicidal rates in the world. Like how sad is that? And again, the only approach to fixing that was calling a 1-800 number and talking to a complete stranger when we're talking about mental health. And for right. me, even at my absolute lowest, like I'll tell you, I wasn't going to call a 1-800 number. I wasn't going to talk to a complete stranger and be like, hey, I'm struggling today. Like that's, I felt like that was like a band-aid, like a band-aid approach to a bull. And like, you're not getting to the root cause. And right. Or physical transformation, you really get into that root cause and you really dive into it more. And so that's really where farm fit training started to come to light. Whereas like, okay, like I'm going to be that person to create this program. I'm going to create something, you know, I didn't expect to create a brand new business less than a year after our house burned down. And I remember the first day of opening doors, I, I remember my mentor at the time, she was like, Hey, if you get six clients, like in your first six months, like you're doing great. Like just realize like getting into the fitness space is hard because mm -hmm. there's so many programs out it's there. So really saturated. Yeah. And so that's why people are so confused. They're like, well, this person says this, this person says that. Yeah. And so one of the things I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. And so I remember opening my doors and I had 60 applications mm -hmm. within less than 24 hours. And, you know, and they're individuals in agriculture. There were farm wives, farmers, um, you know, people that worked in the ag industry. And um, it, yeah, the rest was history after that. It was just like I made a business um you know, really bridging that gap. It's it's not like your typical business either is we really educate the science and why behind everything we do. Um, and, and just like you said, you know, like in the fitness space, like a lot of people that are in it don't do that. They don't educate like, hey, what is a complex carbohydrate? Like, what is that? What is that? You know, or what are healthy fats, you know, right. between trans saturated and unsaturated, you know, they don't dive into protein, you know, protein, everybody should be on a high protein diet because first and foremost, that's how you build muscle. And so it's just like that education. I really dove into that and got certified and really wanted to teach that in where it was more of a sustainable approach for everybody, especially in our space. Like I'm, you know, I'm a busy mom on a fifth generation farm. I have a career and I have two young boys. And the biggest thing with me is like, I need something that folds into that that I can continue on. And so that's well, really so do a lot of people, you know, yeah. a lot of people are busy and uh, not either they're at work or they're not leaving the house because they're working at home now since the pandemic. Uh, I, I will want to run back to when, you know, it's a pandemic that's hard enough. Yeah. But then you lost everything and you said it was a little humbling. You had to borrow underwear or something. Yeah. Well, I'm a giver personality. And I always like, you know, if there's ever, you know, someone locally, we live in a small town, you know, 2,500 is the closest town to us. And if somebody's going through it, you know, small towns, they do rally around each other. And I always was that person, you know, that put together care packages or delivered meals. Like I, that was always my go-to thing. And then having to be on the flip side of that was really humbling in itself because I, I'm not that personality to receive gifts. Like, I don't like it when people are showing up for me because I feel like I need to show up for them. And so it was just super humbling in that aspect because it's like, next thing you know, I had to borrow underwear from a neighbor because, you know, that COVID was that right. next day and I, everything was shut down. Like we couldn't go go get groceries. We couldn't go get clothes. Like, you know everything was locked down. And so it was just like, people were bringing us clothes to where they were bringing my boys toys, you know, with something like that, that you don't think about, like, you know, what does a five-year-old and a seven-year-old want to do at that time? They don't understand what just happened. And, you know, for them, they want that normalcy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do you create a normalcy and chaos on top of going through COVID and losing mm -hmm. her home? And it was just, it was, it was an adventure in itself. And, and that was one of my turning points too, is like after day three, and I didn't share this with you before, but I'll share the story is after three days of our house burning down, you know, we're dealing with insurance, we're talking to insurance and that's a whole nother beast in itself. 
And I remember laying in bed because I didn't want to get out of bed. Like I did not want to get out of bed. I didn't want to face people. I didn't want to talk to anybody, not even my kids. Like I was just. Because you're internally, you're, you're upset and yeah. you're, a, I can tell a strong person and a giver and you don't want to burden people with that or, or what you're feeling and it's like you're in that little cocoon yeah I was definitely in that cocoon and I and I I, I don't know if you believe in God I mean you oh, I, I totally believe in God I prayed to God I, I I and it was a long drawn out prayer and I'm like I just need a sign like some kind of hope or sign to get through this like I am struggling I can't function like I need a sign and I remember getting this vision that I would find my wedding ring because I don't wear my wedding ring when I work out like I I was gonna work out that morning our house burned down it was my it was it was I was getting my youngest ready for his last day of daycare and, you know, and getting him out the door. And I remember leaving the house and that's when my husband called me and told me the house was on fire and that him and my oldest climbed out our master bedroom window. And at the time I didn't have my wedding ring on or nothing like that. And I remember praying and it's so hard. And he's like, go back to the house and find your wedding ring. And so I remember turning to my husband and telling him this vision I had, I was mm -hmm. like, Hey, I'm going to go back to the house. I'm going to look for the wedding ring. I know as crazy as that sounds, but I'm going to go back. And he's like, okay. And before I got, we were staying at his aunt and uncle's house at the time. And before I got to the top of the stairs, um, he already called up, but like eight local women to join me. And I remember telling my son and his aunt and uncle, and like his aunt and uncle are total sweethearts. Like, I don't want to paint a bad picture of them, but they were like, you're not going to find it. Like your house was, you know, 41 square feet on <laughs> the level, like good luck. Like, cause they had to collapse our home on itself to get the fire from stopping because they didn't want it to go into the fields. And they're, you know, they were being devil's advocate, you know, like you're not going to find it. And I remember my, my oldest looking at me and he's like, mom, we're going to find it. Like, oh. and I was like, okay, <laughs> we're going to find it. So we went over there and these ladies beat me to the house. You know, we had shovels. Um, we had metal detectors. Well, the house is put together by, you know, metal. You know, if you think about it, every hinge is put together by nails and screws. So those metal detectors didn't work. But after 45 minutes of shifting in the rubble, because we climbed around and dropped into the basement, and I knew where I put my wedding ring in our master closet and where it would drop, we started finding jewelry. And his cousin pops up and goes, I found it. And I was like, there's no way, no freaking way. And I remember turning around and she did. She found my wedding set. And that's actually, to this day, the only thing I've ever taken from the fire. Um, it was my wedding, wedding ring set. Um, in 45 minutes, we found it. And then it got so smoky that we had to climb out of the house fire. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and we couldn't take anything else. But right. you know, and it was just that sign I needed. And it was like, okay, I found my wedding set. Like, this, this was that sign I was looking for. Um, you know, and I'll be honest too, Linda, it's like 2020. I mean... I cried a lot of times in my workouts. I struggled. Mm -hmm. um, my mental health was low. I was struggling. Um, and I did those free challenges, you know, online. And it just opened my eyes to like, wait, like I can do this. Like I can build a business to really tackle physical and mental health. Well, you you know, people, this happens all the time. Uh, you could be married, you get widowed and you're suddenly, you didn't realize you were, uh, so far in debt and you're about to lose everything or you, you get divorced and you, you're like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to start over again? But, and like in your situation, your house burned down or some natural disaster of a hurricane, a tsunami, a tornado, you know, it happens. And so it's, it's devastating, but what did you discover, uh, that you didn't already know when you had to face this? I think I really, I discovered how resilient I actually was. I didn't realize like I could bounce back from something like that. You know, when I was before finding my wedding set, I mean, I, 
I mean, my husband was contacting the doctors. He's like, maybe you need medication. Maybe, you know, maybe you need to go that route. And for me, it was just like, uh, I don't want to go that route. Like, I don't want to put something in my body that is not natural. Like I can do this. And, you know, facing that hard moment, um, really opened my eyes. Like if you would have asked me in 2020, mm -hmm. if I was resilient, I would have said no. <laughs> like, I mean, I was like a walking disaster, but looking back at it really opens my eyes, like how powerful, like resilient and how I pushed through even the tar darkest moment, like our family face. Like, I mean, my husband's always been super supportive, but there was times in 2020 where we were neck and neck, you know, and just at each other's throats, trying to like figure out like our next steps. And it just really showed like how strong our marriage was, but also how resilient like us as humans can really be when you go through a traumatic event like that and you're able to bounce back. And that can be with an injury too. I mean, we all have setbacks oh, yeah. <laughs> and we just don't think about how we can overcome those setbacks. Mm -hmm. But you'll be stronger than ever. And what you realize is you don't need what you think you need. Yeah. Many, many of the things, I mean, I learned that during COVID and you find all these other pieces of yourself that you didn't know existed, uh, that you learn, oh, okay. Like you said, you learned you had resilience and you learned to tune in to the universe and you realize God's got your back, right? Yeah. hundred percent. Like, I mean, I, w I wouldn't have my business today if it wasn't for that sign. Um, I mean, who knows where I would be today. And that's another thing is like I, I mentioned to you earlier before we got, got started is I always wanted to launch a fitness business. I just didn't know how. And it's not that I didn't know how. It was just like that urgency to do it wasn't established quite yet. And I was comfortable in my career. Like mm -hmm. I loved selling insurance. I was still helping people, you know, being able to focus on not necessarily the financial side of going through like a heart attack or stroke, but being able to help them, you know, focus on the illness and not the money that is attached to it. And so like I, I flourished in that space. Like I was top five in the nation. I was great at it. And again, I was comfortable. I was comfortable where I was at. And it took that big rig direction. Mm -hmm finally get me to going after my dream and my true purpose and passion in life and which and, was the nutrition and and that's what it takes sometimes is just some kind of a disaster something awful happens and then you persevere and you push through and you think of something and you go with it um of course praying about it first of all uh i believe in putting God first and then he gives you the desires of your heart and I've seen that happen time excuse me and time again and so I just really think like also you said you didn't know how that's a thing that we say a lot is I I don't know enough or I don't know how or uh, you know, will anybody come? Well, you know, is this a good idea or is this stupid? We, we second guess ourselves a lot. And really, if you have something that motivates you and gives you passion and fires you up and helps other people, I say, go for it because it's the big dreams that move the needle that change people's lives. And also, uh, I mean, you probably remember your why, why you're doing it. Otherwise, you're just kind of going through the motions. It's not the same. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we need to be backed into a corner just to get out of our own way too good after something. Um, and for me, that was definitely the case. Like, I always wanted to do it and I made excuses of not doing it. Um, was my business perfect out the gate? Absolutely not. Like, I mean, there was there was still a lot of trial and error in figuring it out. But it was just like, once I was in that corner, I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. Like, I'm going to keep going. And so just taking, pushing myself out of the own, my own way and being like, yep, I'm going to figure this out and keep going. It was, a, you know, and really it was the perfect time to start. It was a good time to start because people were hungry for that. They were all struggling and having, you know, being depressed, uh, you know, with, things and not being able to get out and all wanting to work out when the gyms closed for months on end. And so 
it was the perfect time. And God's time is always perfect. He he definitely knows that he's not, he doesn't give us our plan or where we're supposed to go at all at every moment. You know, that's the thing. It's just, you, you'll feel like once I launched my business, I definitely felt like I was where I was meant to be. Um, and you know, and the thing is like, did I feel that when I sold insurance? No, I mean, I loved it and it was, you know, it was my, I was bringing in income and helping our farm and stuff like that. But like now I really taken a whole different level on my purpose and passion. And like, I don't feel like, you know, I'm working every single day. It's like, wait, I get to actually impact people through a physical mental transfer transformation. Like how freaking cool is that? You know, and that was one of the things I really take great pride in is like, I have a coaching staff and mm -hmm. one of the certifications that I require is not only personal training and nutrition coaching, but I also require them to get a mental health coach certificate because you can't just work on your, your person, your like your exercise, your personal training, like your physique. Yes, it always starts yeah. here first. It's it always, always starts decision. mentally. Yeah, yeah. You have to go through that mental transformation as well. Um, you know, and some people only talk about, you know, physical or nutrition, you know, they dive into that, but they forget that big component of mental health and, and tying that all together. And so that was one of the things that I was like, nope, I'm going to require this certification for every single one of my coaches as well, because I think that it's, well, I don't think I know it's such a huge aspect of overall transformation, um, mind, body, and soul, you know, it, it all encompasses and you can't just work on your physical transformation without impacting your mental. Well, I, I still like, I just believe it all starts with a decision and it all starts up here first. Yeah. And that's why visualization is so important. Um, and what you believe you achieve, like, like really starting with the mind and the mindset. And of course the heart set, uh, it's all, intertwined and so when I work with people at Sisterhood of Sweat um uh, I literally want to know what makes them tick oh I love that I love that you said that because I say that okay. all the time okay. I say that to people too I'm like I want to figure out how you tick like how can I motivate you like mm -hmm. what's your motivation like are you a person that needs more you know motivational quotes like pat on the back like that's okay too right. yeah. someone I can challenge and and drive right. and be like oh you can't do that you know and like yeah. my my personality is is like Linda if I was with you and I was in your coaching program and you told me I couldn't do so that I would look at you dead in the face and be like watch me like let's go <laughs> yeah I'm sort of like that yeah too um I love that you said love that. to prove the doubters wrong yes yeah so that's my personality too I'm like uh, you tell me I can't do something, I'll do it 10 times over. <laughs> and and that's great. Uh, you were talking about you were a competitive cheerleader. And that's where you kind of got your start and your love for fitness. Yeah, that and soccer. Um, and then I played fast pitch softball. Um, those three sports, like I was... I mean, it was competitive level. Like I was on a traveling team for soccer, same with softball. And it, it was something that I always grew up in. You know, those are very so much a team sport, but at the same time, it's also an individual sport because you have to bring, you have to raise your own beliefs to be a part of that team. Um, yeah, I, I loved it growing up. I mean, I've always, I was always that small little person because I'm five one. I'm five one and a buck 25, like on some days. It, you know, <laughs> so like for me, when I would come up to bat, for example, in, in fast pitch softball, they're like, scoot in, easy out, you know, you throw it and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to hit a home run and watch me, <laughs> like try to catch me, you know? So it was just, you know, that competitive drive has always been in me um, when it came to sports and like, you know, just proving like, hey, you can, you can do this. Like, it doesn't matter your size. Like for me, like five, one, you know? It, it doesn't matter like your size and stuff like you can really show up powerfully for yourself um don't let somebody tell you you can't do something oh a hundred percent and also what I see in you is what is in everybody if they think about it but your back was up against the wall you thought you lost everything but you didn't lose who you are you didn't lose how you can show up and then you just, what you channeled into competitive cheerleading, I see you have channeled into, into your insurance now into your business. And 
you're look at her. She looks like she landed pretty okay. And so I think it, it shows you once again, that prayer changes things and that, uh, you, you can bounce back from tragedy and it isn't the end of the world, though it feels like it. Yeah. I mean, and that sometimes is when we get backed into that corner, we feel like we can't get out of it. And it's just take one step and then take another step, you know, just focusing on one day at a time. You don't have to know the game plan all at once. You just have to keep moving forward. Um, and that was my biggest thing. Right, right, right. That is so like accurate. I mean, not knowing the outcome of how everything's going to turn out, but you're just that moving forward. Yeah, not, not, and you know, and sometimes that you step backwards, but again, you know, just continually moving forward. And that's really where, I really focused on that. It was just like, okay, this, it's all not going to make sense right now, but it's going to happen how it should. And I just need to keep my eye on the prize and keep moving forward and keep focusing on what I want to do and how I, you know, want to be that powerful mom for my boys. Like my, my husband, I love him. He, he's the type of individual who looks the same since high school, <laughs> you know, one of those people and, and still can fit into his high school clothes and everything, you know, and for me, my body changed a lot, you know, through pregnancy and then two C-sections. And so like, there was a lot of times where I struggled in my own skin and I struggled with, and it, it impacted my mental health because all of a sudden now I'm struggling in my own skin. And, and I, it's like, I almost lost myself in that time. And just that simple moving forward and being like, okay, you know, in 2017, I, I came across a CrossFit gal and I remember joining her program and she humbled me, humbled me instantly. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, do I even <laughs> know what I'm doing? Like, I didn't even know how to do like a proper squat, you know, but again, most of the time when you start a fitness journey or start anything, we don't know how to do it in the beginning, but it gets easier the longer you're consistent and the longer you keep moving forward. Right. And like, And taking action is number one. Otherwise, you're going to stay stuck or sink down deeper. So when you're in a hole and you're in like the depths of despair, even if it's just one small step and it sucks, it's better than the alternative of staying stuck or sinking down deeper in despair. And it's, you know, every journey is started with that small step. So I think like just really putting that in perspective when something's that overwhelming, uh, that makes it easier, right? If you think about it that way versus thinking about where you want to end up, where you were, like hanging on to the past, hanging on to where you were or when you're, you could run fast because you didn't rip everything from the bone. You know, it's, it's when you let go of all of that and you just decide to move forward that things happen. Focus in on the moment, the moment. Um, you know, you always hear those people and my son, my boys are starting to get into sports, you know, and, and my young or my oldest loves basketball right now. And it's, it's really crazy how you see some parents reliving their high school glory days through their kids. Um, and that's one <laughs> of the things that I talk to my husband. I'm like, I am not going to be that person. You know, like I want to be the, where I'm physically, mentally my best right now. I don't want to be like, oh, you know, back in the day I was oh, this gosh. Best. I want to be yeah. now. I want my boys to look at me now and be like, my mom is strong. My mom's capable, you know? And so like me and my husband talk about it because a lot of those dads and moms are, you know, overweight, have the pot belly, you know, not in shape. And they always relive those high school glory days. And it's like, okay, you can mm -hmm. live that tenfold and be even stronger and better version of yourself now. And it just takes that step, that one step to start that, that transformation and to get to that bigger bigger platform and, and be more capable of where you were at. And like, I would have to say I'm physically and mentally more stronger than I was back in the day. Um, well, I mean, building your fitness builds your confidence, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. because you know, it's just doing things you didn't think you could do. And you realize by putting in the work, you change things that you didn't like. 
And also it just gives you all those endorphins. And I just think it's very empowering. That's why, you know, I have a sisterhood of sweat, which is the sweat acronym is strong women, empowering, achieving together. Uh, because I just think it's all encompassing working on your mind, body, spirit, like you said earlier, what would you say is some of the things that you do that makes your program unique? Um, like a workout, like what would it, I want to do a farm fit mama workout. Tell me about it. Get a tire. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Um, well, I really focus on quick and effective workouts in my program. Um, my biggest thing is like, you know, and especially in the agriculture space, like the number one, um, rebuttal or excuse that my community has is time. They're like, Oh, I don't have time to show up for 45 minutes to an hour, you know? And the biggest thing is I, like, I pack these workouts into 20 to 25 minutes. Um, and there, there's, you know, there's two upper body days, two lower body days and one hit day a week. And then you have two rest days. And they're, they're quick and effective. Like I'll humble your ass in those time that time frame, but it gives people to the chance to do, you know, progressive overload, you know, and start to like challenge their muscles by mm-hmm. lifting their weight. And so it's very simple in that aspect where I don't overcomplicate it. Like we're not doing some fancy move. Like I, I saw the other day, wall Pilates is a thing. I, well, oh, I yeah. Know. Yeah. I saw that. And I was like, what the heck is that? Uh-huh. But you know it, a deadlift works for a reason. Like every program should have a deadlift, you know? And, and so it's, you know, sticking to the basics, but packing it into that short time frame where you're going to really challenge yourself and hit failure earlier in your workouts instead of later. And the other thing that we do is like for nutrition, for example, I'm not sure how you do your nutrition, but we really educate the importance on macronutrients. So like looking, you know, yes, you're still calorie counting per se, but you're more looking at the nutritional value of foods instead of empty calories. And so we really educate the science and why behind that when it comes to nutrition. And then we couple on top of all that is mental health. Well, it's always about what you're eating, like how you're combining and why you're like, why am I eating this, this way? Like, instead of just giving me some kind of cookie cutter meal plan. I hate those. It's it's really knowing like to me, I'm not a calorie counter. I'm more. I I, uh, like, uh, but again, it's calories. You're technically focused. I'm usually not like, I mean, I know basically what, what, what I'm having. Um, if I want to put a muscle, of course, count the first time, you know, what I'm protein eating, but it's really about what you're eating when you're eating it and how you're digesting and eliminating it. Yeah. Well, and we live in such a, like a processed food society. Like if you look at it, like up, there's tons, like, I mean, fast chain restaurants are all over the place, you know? Um, and yeah. it, if you really truly think about it, like anytime you go to a gathering, what is it focused around food, you know? And so naturally by human nature, we're all, um, emotionally attached to food, you know, and it's, it's taking that emotional attachment away from food and looking at more as fuel. And it's like, okay, how do I fuel my body correctly so that it functions as best that it's on a high, all high cylinders. Like I don't have brain fog during the day. You know, I'm able to lift bags of seed. I'm able to go between, you know, doing farming equipment stuff like at our farm. And so it's just like switching your mindset to being like, Instead of reaching for that snicker bar, what can I eat instead that's going to be more nutrition dense, like it has protein in it, you know, and something that's way healthier and not a simple carb. And so it's just kind of figuring that aspect and like how you can truly fuel your body to be its ultimate best. And like when I was younger, I didn't understand that, you know, and and I hate it when people say like my metabolism is broken. I'm like, no, it's not. Your metabolism is actually not- you probably need to eat more if you say I'm that. like you, yeah exactly you're not enough a lot of people actually under eat that is the one thing I've noticed is like when they start to track macros and for example in my program is uh I would say there's probably 80 to 90 percent that more under eat than overeat um yeah and they don't eat enough protein in a day they mm-hmm. think they They think they eat enough protein to fill their body. And then when it comes down to it, they're not eating enough. Right. I mean, it it boosts your metabolism. It it does. And 
of course, <laughs> eating the right things, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, eating four pizzas is not going to, it's going to tank your results. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to make you feel sluggish. And then you're, you wonder why you don't have energy. And it's like, okay, wait. You yeah. Need to it's, it's the, like you said, the macronutrients, it's what you're eating. Um, and just trying to eat as clean as you can, because you are what you eat. Your body, uh, the cells change every like seven years, you completely have recreated. So, you know, even if you're out of shape right now, if you start eating great food and great ingredients and working out, you're going to transform your health and your body. And uh, it does matter what you put in your mouth. Yeah, for sure. And nutrition is the thing that a lot of people forget about. You know, they go there, they go into exercise and they're like, my body's not changing. My body's not changing. I'm lifting heavy weights. I'm doing this and this and this. And it's like, wait, how are you feeling your body? Like, you know, abs are made in the kitchen. Like right. you, you can do as many sit-ups, crunches, whatever you are doing for your ab workout, but it, you're not going to see those effects if you don't get a handle on what you're feeling your body with. And backing up just a little bit, a chapter in my book, since we were talking about fast food restaurants, is get out of the drive through and into the kitchen. Because like you said, that's where your, you know, your abs are made in the kitchen. That's 80 to 85% of your results is what you're putting in your mouth because your workout only lasts an hour. And you can either fuel that or sabotage that. Yeah. And a lot of people do. They, they think, oh, it's just one candy bar. Or, oh, it's just one, you know, greasy hamburger from the fast food chain. Well, that one turns into a, a there's another one. Then there's another one. And then it becomes a habit. And it's like, okay, if you want to tackle this truly incorrectly, you have to start establishing those healthier habits and start getting into the kitchen and start paying attention to how you're feeling or how you're talking to yourself plays into that too. Like, are you yeah, really like, I don't cook. People say I don't yeah. cook. I'm like, well, I don't cook or, wrap your or around it I, if you want results. I can never look like you or yeah, no, you can. It's just, you don't want to put the effort into behind that. Like it's not that important to you at this time. And and that's the thing with a physical transformation is it's like, you know, you're 61 and fabulous, by the way, is like, do you want to wait to be told that you have to take a prescription drug and you're going into a nursing home and you can't move or are you going to get a handle on it now and, mm -hmm. and take your life? Because we all get one life to live. Like, are you going to dive into it now and be like, nope, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be proactive. Or are you going to be reactive? I love that too. That's really, really good. And, you know, it's just basically understanding that you, the time in the kitchen is well spent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you don't cook, you know, it's not really that hard. Steam some vegetables, throw them in a steamer, get an air fryer, put your, your protein and the air fryer you can walk away it cooks itself i mean and pot. then the yeah. bags of vegetables are already washed and cut for you i mean it's pretty easy it's actually quicker it's actually quicker than fast food uh in the long run and uh you're gonna be a whole lot healthier hundred percent, hundred percent. I have to, I, I'm going to get your book. I'm totally getting your book. After this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I mean, <laughs> I mean, eat carrots, not crap is another chapter. Oh, I love it. I love it. So <laughs> your yeah, your vibe is like my vibe. So I, I know I'm going to love it. And I'll yeah. like, I'll be like, Oh my God, Linda. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. And also it's all about like the gadgets. Like people are all like, I got to have this gadget and this gadget and this gadget. No, you don't need all those gadgets. You don't. Just Unless start. you have a heart problem and you really want to be like checking, you know, but like, it's about getting that effort forth and working your muscles to failure, working hard, lifting heavier. Isn't going to make us big as women. Most yeah, of us don't have enough testosterone for that. 
Um, and then like realizing that it's about the sweat equity, putting in the sweat. Absolutely. And, and that was one of the biggest myths out there is like women think they need to lift lighter weights and do these insane amount of reps. And it's like, no, you need to lift heavier. And that's one of the things like when I have women apply to my program, they're like, I want to look tone. And, and as, as soon as they say tone, I'm like, okay, sister, you're going to have to lift heavier weights. And we're going to have to hit failure faster. Like we're not going to be doing 25 reps, like for that 10 pounds, like you're not going to see that progress. It's going to take you twice as long to hit failure. Now let's do like 10 reps at 25 to 35 pounds. And now we're talking, you know, for example, bicep curls, like you're going to start to be able to build that muscle and see those micro tears in your muscle to be able to build that lean, sexy muscle mass that you're after. Um, and so a lot of people don't understand like, Hey, you've got to let me to see that progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have rest days too. Like, you know. Yeah, twice a week. We, I incorporate those babies. And, you know, on rest days, like, you know, use it as like an active rest day. It doesn't have to be complicated. You know, right. it's just being away from the lifting weights. You can move your body, you know, go on a walk. And clean um, your house. Clean your, <laughs> no, that's a chore in itself. Like clean. I mean, clean I mean, it, it, it is, a, you know, take that rest day and do some yeah. other things, work on other things. Um, while your body is actually making its most changes on your rest day. Yeah. And sleep, sleep. A lot of people forget sleep. Like your body regenerates itself while you sleep. Like sleep is super important as well. Well, that's like number one to lower your cortisol levels and Maybe. having those too high is really detrimental to your overall health. Yeah. And, and it's it, like in our space, you know, like there's days, sorry, is that me popping in? Like in our space, um, my husband, you know, he, there's times where he won't even get home until late at night. Um, we're talking, you know, 12 AM and then he's back out the door at five. And so like during planting season, his sleep is super struggling and you could see it in his body. He just looks old and tired um and I always talk to him I'm like I know don't tell him that <laughs> I, I do I'm the no black type he doesn't like me at times so he's like okay thanks pointing that out but you know that's the thing too is it's just like we always we always talk about it with our boys you know we have a sleep routine with them um you know we eat dinner at six and then by seven they're in the shower and then by 7 30 is it's up in their rooms and eight o'clock it's lights out like no no ifs and buts and we always talk to them about like how their body needs rest. Like they need to recharge their batteries is what we call it. Like your body needs that, that time to rest and shut off and be able to, um, you know, re not regenerate itself, but like be able to function the next day properly. Yeah. Um, most of our society is just driving their cells way too hard because status and and things have become like a thing, right? Because I can look back in my childhood and we had time for picnics and, <laughs> you know, things like, you know, more community things. And so I think it's just remembering we weren't meant to go a hundred miles an hour all the time. And that, like you said, you only have one life to live. So to recognize you can't take all these possessions, I'm sure you recognize that after your house broke down, that, you know, there's more important things than money and you can't take all these things with you uh, when you go. So there's, there's more important things. And part of that is taking time to smell the roses. Yeah. And enjoy life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we, we lost everything. Um, but just like you mentioned, there's a lot of things that I thought I had to have mm -hmm. and right. after you lose it all. It's like, right. no, no, I didn't panic. Like, yeah. Right. Well, when we built our house, I'll be honest. Um, I don't think I've ever shared this publicly. It's like, we, it was kind of like the keeping up with the Joneses. You know, we were a young farm couple. We're building this big house on a, a 10 acres close to our farm, you know? So when we were designing our house, we had to have all the top of the line, you know, granite countertops, you know, wood flooring. And it was a big spacious home. Like we had the 
peak, you know, inside, um, you know, I thought I was a rooftop, you know, open space type format. And it was such a big home that we probably utilized like 20% of that house. Mm -hmm. Like we probably lived in 20% of that house. And it, it was totally just like keeping up with the Joneses. And like, we haven't built our house yet. We're actually going to tackle that next year. Um, we decided we're finally in the place where I want to do it again. Um, because, you know, after you pour your heart and soul into building your dream home, and then all of a sudden now you have to redo it. It's a lot of work. And my husband and I were talking about it and, oh, it's smaller, way smaller. We're not building a big, we don't care. Like we're kind of thinking like, a, have you seen those show homes? Like, do you know what I'm talking about? Show homes. It's like a shop house. Oh, kind of okay. Yeah. Homes. So that's what we're thinking about building. And mm -hmm. it, it's like, you know, I don't care about keeping up with the Joneses. Like, I don't care um, what well, our neighbors. The Joneses aren't going to yeah. care about. They don't, they don't pay up. my bills. They're they not going to pay your bills. They're not going to be yeah. uh, taking care of you when you get older. <laughs> they don't come clean my house, you know? And so it's just like, you know, at the time when we were younger, like me and my husband, it, we, we did. We built this beautiful home that had everything we wanted. Now it's just like, we realize that we can simplify our life a lot and and get mm -hmm. exactly what our family needs so that we can enjoy Those things cost too. money and money yeah. you have to work for and so how much do you want to work yeah exactly mm -hmm. uh, you know and our boys like I want to be that mom that travels with them you know and like you talked about go have a picnic with them and experience life for the first like experience things with them and when you're put yourself so much in debt because you had to keep up with Joneses is that really enjoying life it's you're more working trying to pay off that paycheck, you to know, impress people that sometimes exactly. you don't even like they say, you know, and to really think about that, uh, like what the end goal that, you know, like, how's that going to all turn out? I think so good. Um, I have so, so enjoyed having you on and Thank you. hearing all about, I mean, you know, you're amazing. You're resilient. You've built this, amazing company and you must be so proud but also I can tell that you uh enjoy each person's transformation tell us where uh people can look up farm fit mama and get uh your workouts and nutrition yeah well I'm on every social media platform except snapchat we've covered that one <laughs> I kind of got kicked off that one uh, but you can find me, it's Farm Fit, and then Mama, it's M-O-M-M-A. -M -M -A. We also have a website. Um, they can check us out on the website. We do a couple digital, we have digital programs out there, and then we also do something called an exclusive one-on-one -on -one coaching. So that's all out there as well. And then I have this amazing program that we launched called the War Bell. It's really cool. I highly recommend it, Linda. You'll have to check it out. I'll send what you What is that? It's a, my friend created this piece of equipment called the war bell. I it's thought like, that's what you said. Yeah. It's like a dumbbell and a oh. kettlebell. Oh, okay. Well, it's okay. So I, gotta, crazy. I gotta see it. I gotta um, see it. I gotta picture. see what you do with it. I'm, I'm all about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, cause I work out at home. Like, I mean, I never make it. The closest gym to me is 45 minutes away that I would go to. And so like all my workouts are at home. And so when he created this war bow, I was like, that thing is sweet. It's super versatile. So that was one of the programs that I recently launched was this war bow program using that piece of equipment. And it, it's cool. It's super cool. Um, his mission too is like, he'll donate, uh, I think it's like 25% back to veterans. So like any per, any time you purchase war bow, um, he does give a donation on your behalf back to veterans and um, different uh, foundational groups that uh, help veterans, you know, whether it's PTSD or stuff like that, or finding a home or anything like that. So it's a really cool company. He's called Iron Warrior, but where you can find me back to finding me, sorry, I'm all, I'm a scatterbrain is it's Farm Fit Mama and then um, our website as well. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks again so much for coming on and, uh, good luck with uh your new program and uh, mm -hmm. i hope everybody enjoyed this episode let us know what resonated with you and if you check out amanda neg follow her on instagram or any social media and as always you guys keep on keeping on bye everyone <laughs>